Hi, my name is Kelly Corcoran. I am the Interim Artistic Advisor for the Lexington Philharmonic, and we are so happy that you are joining us for the last installment of our virtual Connect with Our Musicians series. During the months of March and April, I have talked with members of every section of the orchestra, and last but certainly not least, today I will be talking with members of the Lexville Wind section about some of their favorite moments with the orchestra, the vast repertoire, and more. We hope to be able to present more virtual content like this in the future. If you have three minutes to take this survey, we would love to hear from you about what you want to see from us going forward. So let's dive in and meet our players. My name is David Powell and I play oboe and English horn with Lexington Philharmonic. And this would be my 13th season, happy to do it. Hi, my name is Erin Fung and I play clarinet with the Lexville. I live in Cincinnati and I've been playing with the Lexville since 2019. I'm Julie Gray. I am the contrabassoonist and also third bassoonist with the orchestra, which I have had the pleasure of playing with since 1984. So this would be my 37th season. And I live in Tivoli, New York, along the Hudson River, just north of New York City. Um, my name is Matthew Schuler. I play second bassoon in the Philharmonic. Um, I've played with the orchestra since 1991. So this, was, this would be my 30th season. Um, and I live in Boise, Idaho. My name is Michael O'Brien and I am principal flute with the orchestra, and I started in 2019, and I live in Kansas City. Thank you all for being here today. It's great to, to be with all of you, and I think it's really fun that um, you all are in different geographic locations too, so it's great to be together in this virtual space. David, let's start with you. What's your favorite Lexville memory? There are a lot, and I'm not sure this is easy. Um, we played a Cathedral Christmas concert a few years ago with Christmas songs by Rodrigo that I hadn't known. Uh, I was blown away. They, they were really beautiful. But I think my most favorite moment has to be because it's one of my big musical favorite moments. Uh, and that's in the fifth movement of Mahler's Fifth Symphony. Um, there, there's a moment there when uh, the orchestra gets quiet and there's offstage brass. And it really sounds like there's a door opening to the next world. And to be a part of an orchestra that's really bringing, bringing this to life was, was absolutely a thrill for me. I played this before and I was looking forward to it since this was announced for us. And uh, of course, then it, the oboe on stage brings us back to the here and now, which is wasn't you know hard not to be distracted in a moment like that it was it's a really powerful and very moving moment for me and also there was a moment and I don't remember which group it was but the picnic with the pops it was a beautiful summer evening there was no there were no bugs out um, and uh, it was just fun the music was really good and I, it was just a snapshot it was like a feeling that that I remembered I wish I remembered the group um, but it was one of those that was really nice to have yeah, I love the way, you know, you hit upon um, just great repertoire and then also just the joy and fun of like the picnic with the pops and how music can bring us all these different experiences. And so Aaron, that brings me to you since we were talking about repertoire a little bit with David, what is your favorite piece of orchestral repertoire and why? Hard question to narrow down. There's just so many different pieces that evoke different emotions that I love. Um, some of them include some great romantic masterworks. There's Mahler's Resurrection Symphony, Mahler's Symphony Number no. 9. I personally love Rachmaninoff's Second Symphony. There's such a, a beautiful lyrical clarinet solo in the third movement that I think is one of the, the most beautiful lines that we have in, in the repertoire. Um, but some other pieces also include contemporary works. So I performed a concert with Tanya Tagak, who is an Inuit throat singer in Canada previously, and that was also spectacular just to hear these different sounds and a different culture. So Julie, let's come to you as a bassoonist and contrabassoon player. What's your favorite piece of orchestral repertoire and why? It's interesting that my favorite piece of orchestral um, repertoire doesn't even have a contrabassoon part. My absolute favorite piece is the Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, primarily the second movement for us all. Um, and, 
you know, since I play third bassoon too, I get a little piece of that as well. That happens to be my absolute favorite. But then my second favorite goes totally different. And I love Respighi. And I love the ancient airs and dances suites one and two. Again, no contrabassoon, but those are what I love. If I had to pick one that had contrabassoon though, I'd pick um, Beethoven nine. Um, and the first time I ever played it, I remember thinking, why is my part so much harder toward the end than the bassoon part? And I looked over at the violas in front of me and I realized that the contrabassoon part doubles the viola line. And then at the very end, it is perplexing to me when everyone is in the ode of joy, the contrabassoon just sits there and rests. It's the only instrument in the entire orchestra that has rests. I often look over to Matt's part and play along though. <laughs> the contra has such character. I mean, such an amazing instrument to play. And, and I think I'll, I'll ask you a little bit about that more in a moment, but Matthew, let's, let's move to you. How have you been making music during the pandemic? I've just been spending a lot of time practicing, um, probably the most regular I've been able to practice in a long time and um, enjoying working on improving things, but also working on a lot of solo literature. Um, I'm planning soon when it gets warm enough to go outside and play um, downtown Boise and um, see how that goes. <laughs> Hopefully get some donations for some charities. Music is such a gift to our community. So thanks for bringing that to your community and sharing your talents with everybody. Um, Michael, let's turn to you because, you know, we've been talking about um, orchestral repertoire. And so what is it that is your favorite part of playing in an orchestra? There are so many things I love about playing in an orchestra. Um, I find that the orchestra is the most colorful, um, it's the most colorful setting of music. You have virtually like the most amount of instruments in an orchestra than you would in chamber music versus um, solo repertoire. And the combinations that you can get um, throughout the orchestra are um, pretty much limitless. And I just love being a part of that. So what's great about this call today, this, this conversation is that, you know, we have oboe, we have flute, we have clarinet, we have bassoon, contrabassoon. And so I want to hear from all of you about what it is that you love about your instrument. David, let's start with you. I mean, what is it that you love about the oboe? And I know you play English horn as well. So if you want to comment on the English horn too, that would be great. The oboe gets a variety of jobs to do in the orchestra and composers for a long time have seemed to like being able to give the oboe a long melancholy line. Um, and one of the reasons I think we can do that is it doesn't take really a lot of air necessarily to produce uh, a sound on the oboe. So we can go for a while, you know, the player has to be able to manage the intake of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And that's just, you know, stuff we learn to do. But I really um, like sort of the melancholy side of that, not to we're certainly not without the happy moments too. Uh, but the, the one that you, when you mentioned the English horn just a second ago, the Rodrigo Concerto for guitar, the Concerto de Aranjuez, if I can try to say that. Um, the English horn solo in the second movement of that is really profoundly sad, and but it's equally beautiful. And so the opportunity to, to, uh, to bring this to life and kind of a sing with a voice that I wasn't given in the physical body, but to be able to do that in the orchestra is a real joy. I really love being able to do that. Erin, let's turn to you and let's talk about the clarinet. So what is it that you love about the clarinet? Before I talk about the clarinet, I just wanted to say to David that one of my all-time favorite moments in the orchestral repertoire is that second movement of Revelp's Piano Concerto in G. That English horn solo, it's just, it's the best. There's really nothing more touching than that, except for maybe the, the clarinet solo in Rachmaninoff's <laughs> second symphony that I mentioned earlier. But uh, yeah, I, I love the English horn. One of the things that I love about the clarinet is its ability to play so softly and so resonantly. There's this presence in this pianissimo color that the clarinet uniquely has. You can hear it all the way at the back of the hall and it kind of sounds like it's just whispering to you. So that to me is one of the most magical aspects of the clarinet. 
um, in terms of the character and the soul that it has, I think the clarinet's kind of the chameleon of the orchestral family. Um, it's been used as the voice for a lot of different cultures and traditions like klezmer music. Um, recently, I've been kind of entertaining the idea of the clarinet sort of using the voice of the guanzi, which is a traditional uh, Chinese instrument, which sounds a lot like the clarinet. It's very vocal in quality. Um, it's also used in the Hungarian culture, the Tarragato, um, Bulgarian music, and also Bohemian music, of course, American jazz. So it just has all these different flavors and characters. It's really exciting to try and get out of my shell, get out of my comfort zone, and to try and take on these different characterizations. So that's what I love about the clarinet. Yeah, and so Julie, let's turn to the contra bassoon. What is it that you love about the contra? I think the biggest thing I love about the contra is that it is so physical. The lines are not all that difficult, but when you play, especially low, and I love to play the low notes, it just rattles you to the core. And when, you know, I might only have one note that someone hears, but I'm always getting feedback from audience members. I heard you. It's like one note I played, but it just kind of um, has this vibration that goes all through you. And that's what I love about it is just being able to play low and rattly and buzzy. And it just kind of gives this bass to everything. And I love just kind of blending in with the string basses and the tuba and, um, that's primarily what I like. I mean, I just, that that's the part of the contra bassoon I really love. It's very big, it's very heavy to schlep around, um, but all these years I started to play it back in college. And, um, you know, it, it's a fun instrument and I just love the very physical aspect of it. Matthew, how about the bassoon? What is it that you love about the bassoon? Well, first, let me comment on a couple other things. Aaron, I've always been so jealous of how softly the clarinet can play. <laughs> I'm constantly working to get even remotely close to that. And I can, um, uh, Julie, I can relate to the, the low notes. I started playing bassoon when I was in college. Um, on a whim, I took it home after a semester break and set, set up the book and just started reading through this elementary book and then took out the fingering chart and, and started playing down. And I got down to low B flat and I just said, oh yes, this is it. <laughs> so then I just kept going with it. But that's what I love about the bassoon, the huge range, um, you know, like a three and a half octave range. And I think like the clarinet, like many instruments, but it can convey so many different emotions and feelings. I love the tenor range for its for its lyrical, so often mel melancholy quality. Um, I like the low range, often used in funny ways or menacing ways. It's just, I just love that it has such a huge range. Michael, last but not least, how about the flute? What is it that you love about playing flute? A couple of things that I have to also come undone. So we don't get to play as soft as clarinet, unfortunately. We can't go nearly as long as the oval on phrases. Um, but what I love about the flute is that it does sit high in the orchestra. And I think that adds such a sparkle and a shine to the overall orchestral sound. And that's what I love about the flute. Thank you all for sharing, you know, your unique perspective and the unique colors of your instruments and how they all work together. I love the woodwind section and I think it's just such a magical critical ingredient of this orchestral repertoire that you all have been talking about so um, so eloquently. So thank you for sharing all that. And maybe we'll make a playlist of all these, these pieces of repertoire that you mentioned so people can hear these wonderful solos in this great repertoire. I wanna thank you all for being here. And I wanna thank everyone for watching this video and getting to know our players in the Lexington Philharmonic. And we look forward to connecting with you again very soon and sharing performances with you. Thank you.